Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Linux Mint Debian Edition, or LMDE. This will be number five, right after this. So LMDE5, Linux Mint for Debian Edition, it's basically combining Linux Mint the traditional one based on Ubuntu, except it's based on Linux Mint and Debian. So, so what happened? What what happened? So, it brings all the same Linux Mint features, but no Ubuntu underneath of it. It has Debian underneath of it. The user interface portion of LMDE is just as beautiful as its counterpart, the Linux Mint 20.3. Linux Mint 20.3, I believe, was released in January of this year. So it's both of, of them are relatively new. Linux Mint, um, the user interface itself, as you can tell from it, is based on Cinnamon 5.2.7. It's right here. And you can tell it has kind of the similar kind of structure that you would kind of expect to see with Windows, Windows 7, some of those other types of releases. It's very modern and very fresh looking. Has uh, a beautiful set of icons and also the fonts that it's using by default are, are just really good. So what is this thing and, and, and when did it get released? So uh, the, the first thing about it is, is that Linux Mint 5 is called Elsie. That kind of follows their code names for the, their most of their releases, which are based on women's names. It is based on Debian 11 Bullseye. This system is really set up for people that are attempting to do work on Linux without without the uh, hassles of trying to figure out every nuance that you have to uh, trip over and worry about when you work with some other distros um, that are a little bit more advanced that require more setup to do it. Linux Mint has a number of packages and features out of the box that are attempting to make this all well knitted together and able to function. Why do we have LMDE? Well, I think the, the original concern was is what would happen if, if uh, Canonical were to drop Ubuntu or go in a different direction that Linux Mint may not want to follow. So that was really the reason why they, they, used, they built this LMDE was to use Debian as the base so that they would have a place to go in the event that something happened to Ubuntu. So uh, that that is the the reason. And and the other thing is is that it guarantees that whatever software that Linux Mint is developing, and they do develop software for their platforms, uh, whatever software they're developing will work outside of the Ubuntu sphere of of uh, distro. So. That also helps them in being able to push this out to a wider audience. What about performance? So I'm running a set of benchmarks right now to kind of determine uh, what the performance uh, standard is for Linux LMDE. According to the the website, they, the uh, Linux Mint team says that LMDE is designed to run faster than Linux Mint 20.3. So I am running my typical benchmarks on both of them both 20.3 and LMDE5 to see if that is indeed true, at least with the workloads that I'm going to be testing. So if it doesn't come out, that's fine. I'm not going to worry about it um, because I'm sure that they're looking at workloads that are more typical to their user base. So I think the first place we need to begin is on the installation. So let's take a look and see what we need to do here. So I have the distribution up and running off of its ISO image, and this is a 64-bit image, one of the things that you probably need to know before we get started is that LMDE supports 64-bit in one ISO, and then if you want to install a 32-bit image, you'll need to go and download a separate ISO to do that for, for an i386 architecture. Again, like all installations that I have shown on this channel over the years, I'm going to start by installing from the ISO image or install it. So it's fairly straightforward. Uh, yeah, we're just going to pick our language that we're going to use. Uh, our time zone, which is defaulting to the central time zone, which is fine. 
English US keyboard has detected that and then I need to give it some information about who I am. Now it's going to ask me to erase automatically. It can do that. You can also manually partition. This should take, it'll ask you some confirmation, make sure this is what you really want. Uh, if not, then go back and correct the pieces that you uh, need to fix. Otherwise, off, off we'll go. Now, we're not going to do any encryption. I'll be back when this is done. I'm going to bring it back up at this point. You can see that it's checking the bootloader. One of the things that's different about LMDE versus a full install of Debian, Debian will ask you where you do you want to put your image for Grub. Now, this is really set up for people that are, are new to Linux or are not concerned about all the details. They don't, they don't really care about that. It's more of a, I just want to use the machine. I don't care uh, to learn all the nuances of Linux. So you'll notice a couple of things here. First, it's telling me I need to check my video drivers because I'm running without hardware. That's fine. I can live with that. And then you'll notice there's this welcome screen. There's these first steps here. You'll also find documentation. One of the things that I really like about Linux Mint is that they have guides that are available in PDF and EPUB and HTML. They, they have a number of guides that are available for the system. Now this is just bringing up a browser to go to their website, but you'll notice that there's an installation guide and it's available in a number of languages. There's also a user guide, which is only available in English at the moment. There's also the release notes here, although to be honest, there's not a whole lot in here other than some uh, installer issues. So let's see, then there's some help. You can go to the web forums. We'll go here for that. This is, the, this is where you can go. Now this community is very friendly. Uh, if you have a question, I would, you know, it, even if you have not taken the time to go, I mean, this, there, I mean, look at all these. There's a huge number of posts in these things. So this group, I think you'll find, doesn't expect you to go through 233,000 entries to be able to get an answer to your question about hardware. But, uh, you know, th this group is very understanding. If there's a question you have, you're not going to get yelled at. Unless, unless you yell first. And then, you know, so you just have to remember that people that are in here are doing things out of their own free time and their own goodwill. So just keep that in mind when you're dealing with things. There's also an IRC chat room that if you want you know, to talk to somebody and maybe they know a solution to the problem that you're having, you can do that there as well. We've talked a little bit about community support. Let's talk a little bit about what we have here. So you'll notice that this is Cinnamon, and this is my my default wallpaper, which is eh, okay, I guess. Uh, but you can you can always fix this. So let's say that green isn't your favorite color. It's not my favorite either. But uh, yeah, it's not easy being green. So what we're gonna do here, <laughs> we're gonna go in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update our system, and we'll come down here to the Update Manager. It is signaling that there are updates. You can see the red dot right there. It is indicating that, hey, you've got updates waiting. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get off of this and let it tell me. Now here it's disagreeing with it. If you're familiar with Windows, this is pretty similar. So this is only looking at the cached entries that were created during the time of the install. It has not yet looked at the repos or the repositories that are online on the internet to determine whether or not there are some updates. So we're going to have it go check. So I guess I just do a refresh. There we go. So we have we have some uh, we have some upgrades here. So we'll go ahead and tell it to install the updates. When it's all done, it'll tell you your system is up to date. Now, I don't know if this will tell you if you need to restart your machine or not. However, um, I'll probably am going to do that. But before I do that, let's go, let's let's go and get the system looking the way we want. So the first thing is we have this appearance group. We have some preferences groups here. 
And then we have some hardware setup and administration at the bottom. So the first one is the background picture. Linux Mint and LMDE have a very large set of wallpaper uh, that come with the system. I mean, it's probably the most extensive of any Linux distro that I have ever seen. I mean, it's just tons and tons. So you don't even have to go hunt for it on the internet to find something that you might like. And that would prevent me from closing the window. And then you have Windows borders that you want here. The next one down is the icons that are used and that you have lots of choices here. Uh, you can use the GNOME icons, the Adwara, the high contrast. Then there's all these different colors. Some Office app, you have uh, Hypnotics, which is a application to allow you to watch free TV and, and some free movies and stuff. Currently have 1,959 packages, uh, Cinnamon 527, and let's see, 689 meg. Let's check glances, let's see what it's saying. Looks like uh, 930 meg used. And that, that's the app caches. And then about 3% CPU. That should drop, yeah, and it did. 63 is the hardening indexed. 269 tests were performed. I'm going to bet it's probably firewall issue. This is all fairly straightforward. The only other thing I haven't done is this. And we're looking at 510.103-1. That's, that's probably the most current release of Debian's kernel. Yeah, we already know this is about 6 gig, I think, is what we said. Yeah, 6.2. So what are my final thoughts on this? I mean, where where do we kind of sit? I guess probably the one thing that I would say in, in commenting about, about LMDE, the last time I looked at this was version 4. And there was some problems in version 4. It was sluggish. It was slow. Uh, I don't know what the problem was, but apparently it has been fixed. It looks like it either could have been a Proxmox problem or it could have been an LMDE problem. But... Yeah, they have definitely fixed it. It seems very responsive to me. Um, the As far as the ability to customize it and make it work for me, I don't use the GUI that much, but, you know, yeah, it could work for me. Um, would I change to it? Maybe. So the last thing I want to talk about is the community support. And there is, in the links section here, you'll notice that we talked about forums already. But there's this community website. This area is kind of a place where you can participate in helping to shape the direction of Linux Mint, where what packages you want to see. Maybe there's a there's a certain way you'd like to see the operating system work. So this is very unique. I don't know of any official distribution that has this kind of fully transparent way of getting people active in uh, becoming a participant and shaping what happens with their favorite distro. I don't know of any place that, that does this. Maybe you do. I, maybe the Arch community is able to do that. But I don't know any place where you have an like things like, here, here's some ideas that we're working on. Okay, so here's some ideas. Clean up flat packs automatically works, but this is probably the most popular ones in a minus one. I guess that's a no. <laughs> Software by system monitor, deep in and Linux Mint improvement. So yeah, so you do have some things here that they're looking at. So uh, there's also tutorials here. Um, so these are the most popular ones again, and these are the ones that are the most current. Anyway, that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and bye for now. <music>